world, a multicultural world, for better or for worse, that's what we live in. But that's nothing new. Steve, I grew up in New York. I'm an immigrant son. I walked around the Lower East Side of New York. I walked through Chinatown. There were no signs in English. It was all in, in Chinese, right? In the Jewish area, it was all in, in, in Yiddish. In the Italian area, the signs were still in Italian. It didn't bother me. I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm not looking to go back to the horse and buggy or the musket. But we're not talking about that. When my grandfather came here, he taught me to be an American, learn English, love the country. It's the greatest place on earth. Unfortunately, we all know that's not what's happening. Now, this is old news. Everyone's heard this before. But I lay out in Government Zero, case by case, chapter by chapter, precisely what the decimation is, what Barry from Honolulu will likely do unless he is stopped. And I mean stopped legally. Don't get me wrong. I've called for the methods, and the first thing is exposure. It's knowledge. Each of the past two elections, especially the last one, I said it's the most important election of my lifetime and possibly in the country's history. Uh, and now, I guess, I feel that this one is even more important than the last one and the one before it. But this one really, like you said, I, if Hillary wins, if a Democrat wins, there's, there, there may be no turning back after four or eight more years. No, there would be no turning back. We know she's as corrupt as Cattlegate. We know who she is. She's nothing, she's nothing new. Who's Hillary Clinton? A new, a fresh new face? She's a corrupt harridan. We had eight years of her running the country with her husband. My husband. Forget about the sexual antics. I frankly could care less. What I cared about was the corruption that surrounded the Clinton machine. That's what we need again? All right. So you, you also say that Hillary and Republicans are in, at least this was a headline on Breitbart, I must confess, and I read some, most of the story, are in cahoots. In what respect? New article today on uh, World Net Daily. Michael Savage, Obama owns Republicans. GOP not divided. It's compromised. But yesterday's story was the bigger one, which is you're referring to, which is Republicans in cahoots with Hillary. What did I mean by that? I watched the hearings last week, the so-called Benghazi hearings, and I kept waiting for the Godfather Part 1 to appear, meaning the <laughs> surprise witness. You remember the uncle from Sicily who comes in yeah. with the funny hat? Yeah. And he doesn't say a word? And the rat who was going to rat out the mafia suddenly dummies up because he looks at him. That was the end of the show. Blew the hearings apart. Where was the surprise witness that the fake Republican interrogators could have brought in? And who are they? I named them in government zero. I named the generals and the admiral who Obama fired right after Benghazi. They were ready to send aid. They had the planes. They had the copters. They had the special forces. They had Delta Force. They were ready to go. Somebody said, don't go. Somebody let the ambassador die and the bodyguards die. Somebody let that whole thing come apart. Who was that somebody? I don't know. Bring in the admiral who was fired by Obama. Admiral Goet, by the way. Bring in General Carter Ham, 26-year military veteran, African-American, in charge of uh, the Africa Command. A great man, ready to help. Fired right after Benghazi. Why was he not brought in by the... Republicans during their hearing let, on Benghazi let me, because they were working with Hillary to anoint her. The establishment does not want Trump. The establishment would rather work with Hillary Clinton than with Donald Trump. All right, let me ask you quickly about the Black Lives Matter. Uh, we have another we have another uh, incident uh, in a school in uh, South Carolina. Uh, a teacher said to the kid, put down your cell phone, stop talking, no. They call the principal, put it down, no. I'm calling the cop. Cop comes in, put it down or I'll drag you out of your seat, no. So the cop drags her out of the seat. Now the FBI is investigating uh, Black Lives Matter, they chant in the streets, you've seen it, and they don't denounce it, the leadership. Uh, put pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Uh, wh where the heck are we heading? The Black Lives Matter movement, and I'm going to say it like it is, uh, are Obama's shock troops. They're the brown shirts that Hitler had in Germany. How's that? Does that work for you? Never forget what Hitler did in the beginning. He used street thugs that he gave uniforms to, brown shirts and ties, to beat people up with clubs to intimidate the police, to cause a total takeover of, of civil society. Make no mistake about it. This is the secret private army that Barack Hussein Obama has been talking about. That's what they're building. Let's say I'm paranoid. Let's say we're all crazy. What are they then? They're sterling citizens. They're all on their way to medical school before they became thugs in the street. Please, you know that's not the case. Absolutely. Michael, we got 30 seconds. What, could, what, what do you want people to know about Government Zero? Buy the book, share it with a neighbor, buy one, get one free, meaning give one to a neighbor, give one to a friend. Steve, you know, I've got to say this right right now. I gave away $100,000 of my own money last year, five scholarships, 20 grand each.
to five deserving college students who wrote great essays on what it means to be an American. I am not writing books to make a living. I make a good living in radio. Yep, absolutely. I am writing, I'm writing this book to turn things around to save the country. Mm -hmm. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. You know, the haters are already on the Amazon review page. They didn't buy the book, but they're already hating. i got to read you some of these wonderful re reviews. Guy says, to preface my review of Dr. Savage's book, let me set the stage. I am a professional who considers himself to be a relatively middle-of-the-road conservative. Much to the dismay of the foul-mouthed leftists, I don't live in a trailer park. I don't cling to my guns in the name of Jesus, and I don't belong to the Tea Party and ever have. I do think that Congress has become infested with lunatics on both the right and the left, and I do think the situation in our country has become dire. Michael Savage, whether you like him or not, hits the ground running from page one, and the book is nearly impossible to put down. Now, here's another review. Some of them are a little too long. This is from Sarah Griffiths, published today on the bottom of the Amazon listing. For years, she says, I was a far-left liberal. This man is intelligent and eloquent. The finest mind on talk radio in Washington should be afraid of such intellect. He is prophetic and would have my vote if he ran for president. Now, of course, you're going to see negative reviews from the leftists who are the trolls who don't buy books by individuals such as myself. They hate America. They hate anybody with the guts to stand up to them. And so, therefore, read them if you wish. I really don't care. I know that most people who read the book understand who I am. Another one says... Make no mistake, the ever self-righteous, indoctrinated elitist progressives that seem to make up a larger percentage of the noise level in our country are going to go out of their way to trash Dr. Savage's new book, some of them probably without even reading it. Many of them won't read this book, Government Zero, because it contains exactly what they don't want to know or admit, the unvarnished truth about what they and their intellectual ilk are doing to our nation in the names of their various activist causes and their broken ideologies. They will read about how the leftist Marxist propaganda machine in the United States is in the name of fairness, equality, or justice, pick your buzzword, consuming the masses with a level of claptrap that's never been seen before. The leftist response to this book will most likely be their typical reaction to attempt to attack the intelligence of anyone who disagrees with them by calling them right-wing nutjobs, religious freaks, or teabaggers. It's the best they have. Michael Savage, whether you like him or not, hits the ground running from page one, and the book is nearly impossible to put down. Another one says, this is by D. Buxman, I was having trouble getting to sleep when the book came across my Kindle, but after the first few pages, I knew it was going to be a long night. First of all, I've never listened to Savage's radio show. I'm just not a radio guy. I've never bought any of his books. Contrary to the one-star reviewers that don't actually read this book, I think the central theme is undeniable. And he goes on, I won't read the whole thing. He said, this is probably the best book I have ever read. Savage keenly illustrates the fact that recent periods of Republican control have given us nothing in terms of smaller, more efficient government or more freedom, but have only yielded an imperceptible slowing of the progressive agenda. I want to conclude by saying, well, a lot of things, and I can't conclude by saying a lot of things in a short period of time. I'll save it for when I return from this break. I invite you to call the show with your comments live. After all, it is talk radio. On this great birthday of mine, the birth of a new book, it's the birth of a nation with Government Zero. I realized that if I was sophisticated and had nuance, the show would be on FM. And uh, my voice would be more mellifluous. And we'd play Vivaldi in between the news about how great the progressive government is doing. And how kind and beneficial they are to all of the needy immigrants from around the world in our rich nation. But since I'm not on FM, nor am I FM Bob, I a I'm AM Mike, I'll put it in a different way to you. KSFO Will, welcome to the Savage Nation. Will, what's on your mind tonight? Well, what's on my mind, Mike, is that uh, I guess you might say I'm a, a positive fan, and you might like what I have to say. I'm basically a retired educator from, believe it or not, Palm Springs, California. <laughs> and, uh, Sorry about what I said before, but I don't like the heat nor palm trees. But go on. You know, when I, I you know, I graduated from there in '63, uh, and um, did see those guys there. 
They did. Come. Oh, you, you you saw Frank Sinatra in Palm Springs. But what were you calling about other than Frank Sinatra in Palm Springs with Bob Hope and the girls hidden in the motel rooms? Believe it or not, I saw him at the Riviera when I was uh, about. All right. So can we move away from Frank Sinatra now? What did you actually call about? Oh, I called you about the fact that I have. I'm I'm looking forward to going to Palm Springs. Uh, having my wife take me um, because she is a uh, educator in migrant education. All right, thanks for the call. It's just a, it's a crank call. It's, it's going to be a next. It's going to be that we're going to get them now. That's what we're getting. He sounded like he had the, an adenoid problem. I think he needs some kind of a nasal surgery to go along with the, with the crank call. Okay, New Hampshire, Mike, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, I went and got your new book this morning. I went to Barnes & Noble. Uh, I got there right when they opened. And uh, the good news is that you were right on the octagon, um, right next to Bill O'Reilly's book. But the octagon when, when is O'Reilly going to do a book called... Is O'Reilly going to ever do a book called Killing O'Reilly? Is that ever possible? <laughs> so anyway, so I go up to the... Uh, I go up to the checkout, and this really strung out girl looks like she hadn't showered in three days, uh, takes the book, she rings me up, and uh, once she sees the cover, she starts looking at me like I'm beneath contempt. Is there well, that's right. she, she's superior. She's superior to you. you got to understand that. She's so superior, she hates America. She hates mercantilism. She hates Barnes & Noble. She hates her paycheck. She hates everything. That's what makes her superior is her hatred. Right. So she looks at me, she's looking at my clothes, and she says, oh, you going to work this morning? And I'm like, yeah, 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 man. She, she gives me my change, and she says, do you want a, a bag for the book? And oh. uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not really thinking. I'm like, all right, now I'm all set. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want the cover to get mangled up in the truck on the way to work. So I'm like, right. all right, go ahead and give me a bag. She goes, well, good, because I don't want to look at his face anyway. <laughs> Sounds like someone who hasn't had a date in 30 years. She's a young girl. She's like mid twenties. Hasn't had a date in twenty years. <laughs> so uh, well, okay, so where do you live in New Hampshire, my friend? I live in Merrimack. Beautiful state. I've always loved New Hampshire. The coastal region is gorgeous, and uh, I love the most. Of, what I love the most about New Hampshire is that it was wonderful until all the New Yorkers and Bostonians moved there when land and houses were pretty inexpensive and uh, ruined the state. But other than that, it's a pretty nice place. Well, thank you for listening. I'm, where do you hear the show on the internet in New Hampshire? Because I don't think I'm on a station in New Hampshire, am I? You are. You're on WEZS in Laconia, which is in the lake. Well, I apologize. I didn't know that. I mean, I love being on any affiliate I'm on, wherever I'm on. And that's beautiful to hear, to imagine. I try to imagine what it's like to drive around in a car, truck, whatever, or be sitting in a house and listening to me in various parts of the country. Well, now I will visualize... You driving around in a truck in Laconia, New Hampshire, <laughs> listening to the Savage Nation. Let me send you a free copy of the book to give away to a liberal neighbor, someone who doesn't even read yet. Maybe you can uh, teach them how to read, and eventually in a few years they'll learn how to read the first, the, 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 the title of the book. It may take a few years for them to learn how to spell G-O-V-E-R-N-M-E-N-T-Z-E-R-O. Thanks for calling. I'm just an Oki from Finoki. Here's a nice caller out of WJR in Detroit. Notice I say Detroit, not Detroit. WJR in Detroit, my friend. What's on your mind, John? Uh, went out this morning to buy your book. I've been in Walmart for the few weeks that they, you know, put the books on the shelves, and I told them you're going to have a good book coming up. Usually they'll put them in after it's out. But I went in this morning about 11 o'clock, and there was one copy left, and I bought it. One copy left in Walmart? In which city? Bell Fountain, Ohio. Well, maybe they only ordered two copies. I don't know how many they ordered, that there, were, there was only one copy left. What, is there another conservative in the entire city? Well, <laughs> could be. You, you may be only one of two conservatives in your whole town. <laughs> could be, but uh, I went down and I, I told them, I said, as soon as you get it in, I'll buy it. And I went this morning and it was there. They come in early in the morning and restock the book. John, that's so kind of you. I'm sending you another copy, a free one for your uh, for your ex-wife. Stay on the line. It's like a, a, it's a joke. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm sure he's a happily unmarried man, but uh, you know, I'm thinking maybe there could be some kind of buy-ins amongst women who have book clubs across America, where they get together tomorrow, they have lunch, and they all go into a bookstore together, 
and they start demanding that the book be uh, displayed more prominently, and then they buy them. I mean, that might a buy-in. You've heard of buy-ins back in the 60s? Why don't we have buy-ins across America?